Hey again, everybody. Um, June was a really kind of exciting, hectic, and challenging month. Um, I, I always take the month of July off to travel with family and for vacation. And so um, now I'm here on the coast of Brittany. Um, but before I left, it was kind of a race to get um, the keel affixed. A couple of the top priority items were one kind of finalizing and fairing and then placing the centerboard trunk, which to do that, I mean, it's probably 40, 50 pounds and I had to take it on and off and on and off and on and off. Um, and it's a little bit too heavy and awkward for me to do that myself. So, so yeah. I had to have help for that. Um, but with some trimming and adjustment and fairing, um, we got the centerboard trunk placed. The second challenge was correcting a couple of problems that I had with uh, the timbers. The fundamental issue is that when I was boring the keel bolt holes through the keel and into the timbers, you're basically going from the largest object to the smallest. So it's like you gotta have a, a, a real good line for your drill. And like my first one, I made an error. One is that the first timber that I drilled, I did not have it, um, the drill appropriately aligned. So it actually kind of like came out. That's a huge bummer. And uh, I was about ready to jump off a bridge. Um, but what I'm gonna do is essentially, um, just kind of like epoxy a piece of white oak um, here and probably um, screw it in as well so that it's nice and strong and it basically functions as a very thick timber um, for station four. There's a couple other things that I have to epoxy and then um, I should basically be ready to um, affix the keel. So I've got um, a piece of uh, scrap white oak um, that I cut off from the very big timbers that I had. Um, and you can see here actually um, this process. I'm not sure at the outset that I really understood what happened with warping and cupping um, from a from a green a green board or a green timber. And now what I kind of like understand is that I um, mean why like why do you need a vertical grain or kind of what happens with it? And basically the point is that um, the wood wants to straighten out its rings. If they're already vertical, if they're already straight, then you're not going to get any uh, kind of cupping or warping, right? Because there's no, you know, there's no way for it to straighten. They're already straight. But when they're kind of curved like this, it wants to straighten out. And so here you can see the ends come up. So essentially what I'm going to do, this is way too thick. 
uh, I'm going to kind of like um, cut this for thickness uh, as well as to size to go on here. So you can definitely see how this is cupping with the straightening of the rings there because of that like tension, I think. And you can see on this edge as well, right? It's, it was curved. Here's the grain, um, even though it's kind of like from a different direction, but um, the edges are kind of coming up here to straighten it out. And then on the keel itself, I had to start cutting the rabbit and then um, fairing a bit, still more fairing. Seems like fairing is basically never done. Um, and then I had to affix it to the centerboard trunk, which I had placed using first 5200 and then um, kind of drilling, finalizing, and then inserting um, the keel bowl. It's finally just about time to carve the rabbit into the keel. I've been kind of avoiding this, putting this off, facing it with some trepidation. But, um, you know, I've fared the frames just about as well as I can do. And um, I got a spoke shave, which was my first, and um, it's actually working like a charm on this. Um, so, so sharp and so smooth. And so we'll go from station to station with the markings that we made with the bevel gauge and um, soon hope we'll have a rabbit cut. Don't sweat the technique. Don't sweat the technique. Let's trace the hits and check the file. Let's see who bit the dot tech the style. I flip the script so it can't get filed. At least not now, it'll take a while. I change the pace to complete the beat. I drop the bass to MC get weak. For every road they trace is a scar they keep. Cause when I speak, they freak the sweat the technique. I made my debut in 86 with a melody in the president's mix And I would stay on target and refuse to miss And I still make hits for beats For these clubs and for cars and jeeps My underground sound vibrates the streets MCs wanna beef then I play for keeps When they sweat the technique Don't sweat the technique After the big glue up of the keel uh, along the centerboard trunk and I gotta say 5200 is the worst substance known to humanity it's just gets everywhere it sticks it's hard to clean up I guess we'll say that makes it good for these purposes once you use it to fill um, a spot and to affix two pieces I guess it's not coming out but God, this is horrible. So I got this on last night. I drove a couple of the keel bolts and I've got to do several more to finish the centerboard trunk. I got to move my way up to the stem. Then I'm going to bolt the stem to the keel with the scarf joint. So the keel is on. I don't have all the bolts 
affixed and tightened yet because they need some kind of like custom lengths and thread. What you can get from the major suppliers like Fairwinds Fasteners or uh, um, Jamestown Distributors like are not quite the right length. And those can be cut, of course, but the thread is not the right length. So I've got to customize those um, a bit um, because there's some nine inch um, bolts, there's some eight inch, there's some six inch, and there's a handful of seven inch. And seven inch is the real problems um, where if you use an eight inch bolt, you basically, and it's too long, you more or less, you gotta um, cut off the thread and the thread doesn't extend far enough um, up the shaft. So I'll have to um, extend the threads uh, myself a bit. Well, it's pretty great news. I just drilled the bolts for the um, scarf connecting the stem to the keel. And then I put in, I don't know, maybe a quarter or a third of um, the keel bolt, the keel bolts uh, connecting them to the floor timbers. And so this is basically it. In the meantime, I'm sailing two person dinghies here um, on the La Manche, or what we know as the English Channel on the coast of Brittany, um, swimming and um, enjoying the really great maritime culture that they have here. Just behind me, in fact, is where I first learned to sail on a catamaran um, with my um, one of my kids. Um, so it's always great to come back. And I found out my wife's great grandfather had a schooner that he used for racing um, in some like um, um, some English Channel races. It was sailed 296 in the 1930s and 1940s um, from the ROC, and uh, actually. Um, probably raced against Tally Ho in um, the 1920s and 1930s, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in an upcoming um, episode. But for now, great to see you all, and um, keep sailing.